Today we are going to look at how to use models to multiply fractions. Before we head into fraction multiplication, let's take a look at a regular example of a multiplication problem. On the screen you can see that I have 45 times 16. In this case, what the problem is saying is that I have 45 groups of 16. Now that's a lot of groups of 16. If I take a look at my 16s here, I would have to have overall 45 of them in order to create my answer. So this is what a general multiplication problem looks like with whole numbers. Now with fractions, a number problem might look as such. 5 times 1 fourth equals. The way we read this is exactly the same way as what, how we looked at the 45 times 16. Here I have five groups of one-fourth. A story problem that you could look at for this example would be, I have five Christmas presents to wrap. If each present will need one-fourth of a foot of the wrapping paper, how much wrapping paper will I need? A very basic model that you can use to create this would literally be to draw out the numbers of fourths until you get as many as are needed. In this case, I, ha I would need five groups of a fourth, so I literally have one, two, three, four, five groups of fourths. Now the way we write this for our answer could either be five fourths, which is the improper fraction, or, if you notice, I have four-fourths, which is the same thing as one whole, and one-fourth piece of the next whole. Now remember, because this is in a story problem, we are looking at this example as one, I would need one foot of wrapping paper and a fourth of a foot of another wrapping paper in order to wrap all five of my Christmas presents. In the screen before, we took a look at how to model this fraction multiplication problem using a basic model. From now on, we are going to use a number line model in order to create a more effective model for how to multiply fractions. So again, we have the same problem, 5 times a fourth, and the same story problem. I have five Christmas presents to wrap. If each present will need one-fourth of a foot of the wrapping paper, how much wrapping paper will I need? Well, in this case here, I have a number line here, starting from zero, one, and two. I can tell that I have fourths because each section between zero and one has been divided into four equal sections. So the distance from zero to this first line would have to be one-fourth because there are four equal pieces before one whole. Now in this case, again I have five groups of one-fourth. So well, in, with using our, um, excuse me, our number line here, we would end up jumping five-fourths or one-fourth, two-fourths, three-fourths, four-fourths, and five-fourths. On my number line, you can see again, this is 5 fourths written as an improper fraction. Or, if we take a look at the number line, it's really easy to see where my holes and where my pieces are um, end up on the number line. So here I have one whole and one fourth of the next whole. Or altogether, one and a fourth feet of wrapping paper is needed in order to wrap your five Christmas presents. Now, here's a problem for you to try on your own. A single soup recipe needs a fourth of a tablespoon of salt. How much salt will you need if you make eight recipes? So go ahead and pause the video right now and try and draw out a model. You can draw a basic model such as our first example or to better create a better representation, try drawing a number line. Here is what my model would look like to solve this problem. Because I have a single soup recipe that needs a fourth of a tablespoon of salt, that means my number line is going to be dealing in fourths. 
So here I have my fourths built up. Now I don't, I know I'm going to need more than one on my um, number line because I need to make eight recipes. So if each one of these is a fourth, and I go one fourth, two fourths, three fourths, four fourths, five fourths, six fourths, seven fourths, and eight fourths, eight fourths would be where I would make eight recipes. Well, how much is that in terms of our answer for a problem? Up here, I have two holes. Well, what is two holes? Two holes in this case is two whole tablespoons of salt is how much is needed to create how much salt you will need to make eight recipes. Now, you might be having a lot of friends over if you're making eight separate recipes of soup. But that is what our problem is asking us. This um, capital T refers to tablespoons. Eight fourths or two tablespoons. All right, moving on to our next level of fraction multiplication. Now we have the problem one half times one fourth. Now, thinking about this problem in the same way that we did our other multiplication problems, what I'm saying is I have one half groups of fourth. One half groups of a fourth. So, here I have my fourth piece. Now I need to find half of my fourth. In order to do this, I literally need to divide each of my fourths into half to see what half of my fourth would be. If you take a look here, here's my original fourth piece. Here's that next fourth piece right here in the big ones. The blue arrows refer to where I took my fourths and divided them into half. So now I have two pieces for each fourth. So what does that make this piece right here? This piece literally is one half of my fourth piece. Well, in order to know what the name of that piece would be, I then have to count how many I have. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. I have eight equal pieces, so this section right here has to be an eighth piece. So one half of one fourth is an eighth. One half of three fifths, or one half times three fifths. Now remember, thinking about groups of, I have, I need to find what one half groups of three fifths would be. Here we are. My three fifths has been indicated by this box, or excuse me, rectangle. So here's my three fifths. I need to find out what half of that would be. So again, we can kind of estimate, but in order to truly figure that out, let's list our common uh, multiples of each of our denominators to find multiples that they share in common. So going along, here's the twos and here's the fives. I have two, four, six, eight, ten. Oh, ten here. And looks like twenty. Now we really only need one and we usually choose the lowest, in this case ten. I will need to change from fifths to tenths. Now, in this case, that happens to be fairly easy. If you think of that, you have fifths. If you take a fifth and divide it in half each time, you will get tenths. There are my tenths. Let's check to make sure. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Ten tenths. All right, so how much is in my three-fifths now? I did change from three-fifths to tenths now. So I now have one, two, three, four, five, six-tenths. Same amount, different measuring pieces for equivalent fractions. So now I need to find what half of my six-tenths are. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six divided by two is three. So here I have my three and my three. 
what does each one of those pieces equal? It is a tenth. So one half of my original three fifths is the same amount as three tenths. Here I have the problem one third times two sixths. Now, again, thinking of this uh, of this as a regular multiplication problem, I need to find what one third of my two sixths would be. On my number line here, I have indicated two sixths um, from zero to one here. I need to find what one third of that would be. Well, I could try and guess and make thirds from this part, but how would I know how much what each one third piece would be? In order to find that out, I'm going to have to play with the denominators in order to change it into a way that we can find what a third of just the two sixths would be. In order to do this, I need to take a look at some common multiples of my denominators here, thirds and sixths, and find if I have any multiples that they share in common. So going along this list here, as you can see, I listed by uh, multiples of three up here, and multiples of six down on the second line. So going across here, I have six is shared in common, 12 is shared in common, 18, and 24. Now there could be more, however, we don't need more than really just one in this case. We do, however, have four. Now, in order for this to work, I'm going to have to take my two pieces here and change them into different denominators between the thirds and the sixths that they share in order to then find what only one third would be. In this case, if I take a look at my very first denominator here, or first common denominator that they could share, I have sixths. So if I change my pieces here, into six pieces, would I then be able to take my six and find what one third would be? The answer is yes, I could. Here I have taken again one, two, three, four, five, six. I have my six pieces. Six divided by three to find out what a third would be means or is equal to two. That means I would have two pieces in each one of my thirds. Let's check to see if that's true. Here would be one-third, the next two would be two-thirds, and the final two would be three-thirds of the two-sixths. Now, we have found what one-third would be, however, we still don't have the fraction name of one of these pieces. In order to do that, we then had to do the same exact to each one of our sixth pieces to find, until we get to our one, to find out how much each one of these fractions pieces would represent. If I count them up, I will find out that I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, and eighteen. Eighteen equal pieces. I have two of those, so each third is the same amount as two eighteenths. So one third, which is represented right here, of my two sixths, which is the um, red box, is the same amount as two eighteenths.